No, sure. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to this uh, webinar or actually this is a re-recording webinar. We had slight audio problems in our live webinar, so we'll do this quickly again. And uh, in today's webinar, we our topic is 7.7.0, .7 which was released last week. And uh, most of this kind of new things in that 7.7 .7 was related to widget sets. And uh, there was like lots of different kind of enhancements to the widget handling. And we will go through most of those stuff in this webinar. But before we go that, I could ask Teemu Suontila, who is my special guest here today, what other features were introduced in 7.7? .7? Well, thanks for having me here. So basically the most important change for me as a web framework developer is actually the changed build. So we redid the way Varden is being built and just changed it to be built with Maven. Okay, that means so that it's a lot easier for anyone to contribute to us. It is a lot easier for anyone to make their own customizations and have their own build from the Vardin done yeah. in their own workspace. So practically you just to get the sources from GitHub and import it to your IDE and make your own build of Vardin. Necessarily not even import. You can just say Maven install and now you yeah. have a new version of Vardin in your local repository. Yeah. And uh, what else? That doesn't... Well, that, uh, that's not, one not of the... Not visible for most developers. For most developers, no. Um, for example, we also made the change uh, from quit modules. Uh, so we used to do, do it so that the quit source codes were bundled into the Vardin jars yeah. for the uh, client-side compilation. But now we have actually changed it so that it is actually using them as a dependency, which results in smaller war files and generally being less... Uh, less messy in the dependencies. Yeah, and this actually works very well. I actually already tried this feature in some of the pre-releases. I think it was RC1 or something. And uh, there you you can actually swap between these our build quit models into the official ones. And I used the pre-release of Google Web Toolkit 2.8. Yeah, it was, I think, RC2 there. And uh, then you can actually use Java 8 on the client side as well and all the new fancy features in, in the new Quit release as well. So you can now kind of choose which version of Quit you use. But yes. if, you, if you go for Quit 2.8, then you still need to, or also need to upgrade Java version. So yes. Google so Web you, Toolkit you can, can only work with Java 8, not with Java 7 anymore. Yeah. You can use it with Java 7, and when you change into 2.8, you actually are going to lose some uh, browser support. Yeah. Anything else? Well, uh, there was also the contribution from a user to our login form. Yeah, it I has think it been was Ingo Kegel who actually contributed yes, this. Yes, I think so. So basically, it is now undeprecated, and you can use it again to make your login forms with a nice and simple API. Yeah, excellent. And lots of bug fixes. Lots That's of well. bug fixes, minor enhancements. Yeah, something that we couldn't bring in in minor yeah. uh, in bug fix releases. Yeah, because of changes to API, because changes to dependencies, because changes to whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for these widgets at renewables, and uh, I have heard that it's actually a lot faster. Yes. So let's try that. Uh, let's make it so that I I will be here on the left side. I will be making a new project with Vardin 7.6.8 and you will do the same with Vardin 7.7. .7. I will be using command line because I want to use the specific version. So there. And are you ready with your project? Yeah, I got Vardin app right okay. there. And let's see. Okay. Let's so competition who gets to the application first. Okay, go. <coughs> you get a head start. Yeah, but just once again. Compiling. Yep, that's about it. Compiling. I'm still compiling. So it's going to take a while. Yeah. Apparently, you didn't compile the widget yet. No. So previously in Vardin 7.6, the, there was always a widget set when you created a new project. And that's, of course, because you probably want to use some add-ons. But yes. now that you didn't use any add-ons... Basically, the 7.7 Vardin Maven plugin 
notice that I'm not using any add-ons that require a custom widget set. Okay. So it didn't compile me one. It just okay. used the basic default widget set we provide with one. Yeah, but will it get then com more complicated if you want to use the add-ons? Uh, let's take a try. See. Okay. You're almost done. Okay. Okay. Let's let's wait Good. for me because I'm almost there. Jet the starting running and localhost 8080. It's there. Okay. It is there. Yeah. So I was about one minute slower. So about. okay. So let's try using let's charts. let's add in charts. I will open this into my IDE as well and. Okay, and then we oh, yeah, want yeah, to have yeah. the dependency. I need to check the dependency, yes. I will take it from the directory, old school. And actually, I want to use the stable version, so 3.1. Yeah. Uh, where are my dependencies? Over there. And let's add it to POMXML. Up there. And to my UI, we want to create chart. Chart C, so I need a new chart. Um, okay, apparently I didn't have one in charts there, so let's build with dependencies. Alright, now I have downloaded charts. I have charts, I have the dependency. I'm ready to start building whenever you are. And what? Is your NetBeans acting up? It's acting up. What version did I add there? That looks looks like it. The one there's supposed to okay, be. Okay, let's, let's use this one because this is the one that I have in my Maven cache actually. So, okay, now I can import what it turns. Yes. So, get configuration. Get configuration. Get uh, no, set series. Set series. Add. Is it add or set? Yeah, it's add. Maybe. Set series. Set. Yep. It's not easy yeah. doing what in charts. Yeah, and especially as I'm compiling my widgets. <laughs> New list series. One, two, three. And still I would need to add it to the layout. Yes. That's it doing. Okay. So and ready to Race. We are ready to race. <coughs> Let's see. And there is my jetty, and there is my chart. Okay. And I beat you to it. I'm again compiling my widgets. So yes. apparently there is something else as well. As, yes. As well. I I did cheat. Okay. So in my POM XML. I set this variable here. This basically sets how it should get the widget set and from where. Okay. In this case, I used the keyword CDN, which basically means that it's using a closed service provided us by us at Vardin that basically compiles it for me. And yeah. because somebody, maybe me, maybe someone else, had already built this exact combination of 770 and the charts 3.1. I actually got it immediately without any time for compiling anything. I didn't have to wait. I didn't have to do well. It, it takes about, what do I say, seven seconds, seven, eight seconds to package this. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, it took, took longer than that. Yeah. Well, 7.229. Yeah, but time. practically no time spent on yes. which is the compiling. And in my case, it took a lot. I think I'm not sure if I can see it from the logs. What was the compilation time for which it's at? Uh, yeah, that's okay. about 40 seconds. Yeah. 
for 40 seconds and, and my computer is super fast yeah. and I also actually had the cache here. I didn't clean the cache, so if I would do like a really clean compile, it would take almost yeah. a minute with this computer as well. So, so, so there is some, some, some trickery with the CDN, yes. Um, should we discuss some more about the CDN? Yeah. <laughs> what so, does it actually mean? So, so it doesn't actually package your widget set into the WAR file either. So no, yeah. uh, that's why it's about one megabyte smaller than yeah. it would be with the widget set. Yeah. actually. But you there. can configure that somehow yeah. so that you can kind of load it local, serve it locally as well. So you can yeah. only use it for combining the widget set only and not hosting it. So we have the fetch mode. Yes, the fetch mode. And in this mode. If, if I do this again, yeah. at some point this will stop for a moment and we can see that it's actually downloading a file. Fetching, fetching a widget. widget set from CDN. Yeah, so it, now it downloads the widget set, pre-compiled widget set from the cloud to your WAR file and yes. now it serves it from your computer. Yeah, that took about 14 seconds and it's about one megabyte bigger file than the CDN one. So. Yeah. When using the CDN, it's really, really easy feature to get, get to use to. <laughs> yeah. And also you didn't use any kind of widget set annotation. Either. No. Yeah. So in, in my computer, there is still this widget set annotation and my test app mm. widget set and you have nothing. It's, it just works. You just works. Matters. So, but sometimes you actually need the widget set. What do you do then? So if you want to, for example, make a, like a, optimization or you want to replace some client-side implementation with your own hacky solution locally, what do you do then? Well, we still provide the support with the add widget set annotation, so you can still add your yeah. own custom so existing, widget set. So existing yeah. project which has this widget set, they will, they still, will be still work just the way they used yeah. to. So if, you, if they want to go for cloud compilation, they will need to remove the widget set yes. and remove the widget set annotation. Yes, both yeah. of them. So basically how the CDN stuff works, actually the local compilation, it creates a app widget XML file yeah. in our generated resources folder. Yeah. Can you and show me that widget set? So, okay. It so is very simple. Just default module. widget set and then it, had, it has automatically added this charge widget set. Yes. Okay. And yes, I changed it uh, into the local mode. So now it's actually compiling it locally yeah. instead of requesting it from the cloud. Yeah, and that is created to generate its resources. So yes. you are not supposed to add this into the into your source code management system like JIT. No. Basically this should be always auto-generated when needed. Yeah. So there's no need to store an extra XML file and see it updated every now and then but because somebody has different formatting for XML yeah. files or yeah. But what actually happened during the compilation? Did it send all the sources to the service or no. Um, basically, what it sends to the service is a information package about which Vadim version are we using, which add-ons are there, what versions of the add-ons are there. Yeah. And these add-ons need to be available in Maven Central or in the Vadim directory. Yeah. Okay. So but that, those are the two that locations. That applies for, I'd say, most Vadim applications, though. They are pretty much yes. like this, so you don't that many times have anything no. client-side extensions. Or at least you should kind of aim for that. And uh, actually, when, 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 you, when you start to use this kind of cloud compilation, you are actually using the exactly same widget set as, as maybe your competitor or, or yes. some other company there. So they might be using actually the same, your widget set. <laughs> well, it's, it's not per se mine, but it's a, it's a combination of these couple of add-ons that I want yeah. to use. And apparently someone else was already using it, so my, my compilation time was zero. Yeah. I just got the URL and I'm starting to use it. Yeah, but if the service needs to compile it, then it takes a bit while. Yeah. And, but it's all, always only for the first one who accesses. Yes. So, so in a team, when you have a, like a big team and uh, somebody updates one version, then yeah. there will be small pause during the compilation. Yes. And uh, then after, ev after the else. initial combination, uh, co uh, <coughs> compilation is done, then it will be available for everyone else without the compilation time. Yeah. So okay. it takes about a minute or two, depending on if there's queue and how, how the services are available. But basically, after the initial build, you can just keep on using it. And unlike every time you call Maven, Maven clean package, Maven clean install, whatever you want to call, 
you don't actually recompile the widget set. You just request that, hey, is the URL still the same? Okay, let's use that one. Yeah. And that's it. So it's, it's a lot faster if you need to do multiple times this. Uh, some people used to uh, get this uh, external jar file that actually contains the compiled widget set. I heard that you have yeah. been actually using yeah. that kind of approach. Th yeah, that kind of helps you when you do kind of the clean install for the main project. You want to ensure that there is no dirty files in your application. Yeah. And uh, that previously, if you don't don't use this kind of a separate model system, yeah. then it will You're force to recompile. The, yeah, recompiling the widget and it will take a while. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds pretty awesome if you are using those publicly using available add-ons only. only. Okay, yes. and uh, if you have the local changes, then you are going to have to use the Quit XML file definition, most likely. Or yeah. if you or if you are already using add-ons and yeah. you are using the local compilation anyway, you can do so that you add a new package to your source main called client. And everything and under, the under quit, this quit stuff goes there. Yeah, all the quit stuff goes under client and it will be compiled into the widget set. Okay, yeah. So but this depends on you actually already being there to compile the widget set. So if yeah. you're not compiling the widget set, this client folder will be just ignored. Maybe Excellent. we can add a new feature that checks that this folder exists and uses it. Yeah, sounds pretty, let's say, Productive thing. Productive. You will not use useful. your mind waiting for the widget <laughs> compilation and going for coffee. No more that. <laughs> yeah. But you can just continue thinking and keeping your focus on. Uh, so this unfortunately means. What that about? What about? Th there must be drawbacks as well. So yeah. Well, uh, basically, you shouldn't use the CDN mode in production. You shouldn't even use the fetch mode in production. You should always compile it locally to be sure that everything you wanted to compile is actually in there and nothing else. Yeah. Because so, as so practically, you, if you want to make true builds and yes. true versions, you want to make them so that you can repeat them yes. if needed. And With this the is CDN, kind of a, you, you don't know what kind of magic we are doing there. We are not doing any, any magic, but let's, let's say that your company is really tight on the security and you don't want to run anything outside yeah, so of practically, if, if you use the cloud compilation, even yeah. just the fetch mode, you will be kind of exposing to our service the version that you are using and the add-on versions yes. that you are using, but nothing more. Nothing yeah. more. So if you if you want to keep those as your own information as well, then, then you have to. You kind of have to do it locally. Yeah. Uh, and if you're, if you're using the CDN, there's the theoretical possibility of a security breach, for example, a man-in-the-middle attack when somebody serves you a widget set that you yeah. didn't actually want. But, but the quite, odds of that happening is yeah. quite, uh, quite yeah. slim. There, there is SSL or TL, TLS. Yeah. So security. So somebody there, there would have to go any, really any far in making this happen. Yeah. But you never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But basically, if, if you want to make a production mode of something, you would want to use the local compilation just to make sure that it is done the way you want it to be done. Yeah. Well, it's very good for development phase. Yes. And it's very easy to switch between these modes with this one property only. So you can probably just configure it so that there is, maybe, for example, with Maven, there might be a different profile for the for the release builds that actually yes. uses the local compilation and then developers can use it during the development, they can use the CDN option and then it's like you super can, fast. You can everybody. even put a, your CI service to actually use the CDN mode just to make it so that it doesn't spend any time actually building the widget set, but mostly it just goes straight to the testing and see that everything still works. Yeah. Okay. Yes, since it's a, it's a Maven variable called what in widgets mode, widget set mode, that means that you can just override the property in your custom profile and have it done one way when running production and one way when running development. Yeah. I think we have covered pretty much the whole stuff. So let's make a short summary of what we learned here. So no quit, uh, uh, quit modules anymore. So no, no dot quit dot XML files anymore. No. So nothing you need to do there. No. Except. Except if you want to do some 
really custom local stuff or optimization optimization is another one yeah and uh, no widget at annotation no so that is needed only if you have these custom yeah. so most, most with most applications no quit models and no widgets at annotations anymore yes things will just work with or without add-ons yes Both and ways. One thing that you should also consider if you have this client-side code snippets in your main Bardin projects, you should now, also previously, but especially now, you should think about moving those to like a different module and using that module in your... Yeah, at least different module and having yeah. it as a uh, dependency. Basically, we remade our multimodal archetype as well. So it will now actually contains a add-on module that is added as a commented out dependency in that uh, UI module. So basically yeah. you can build your own custom client side add-on or server side only add-on, whatever you yeah. want it to be and, and just add yeah. it as a dependency. Yeah. And use it locally only or yes. publish only it. Only locally or, or publish you it can publish if you want to. Yeah. If there is no like business critical information, it's probably best to just put it to the one in yeah. directory, share it with everybody else, get some contributions, and also then you can use the cloud compilation mode and yes. make your developers much more productive. And about these models, there was actually, I wrote the article and uh, new archetypes for widget set models. You should use those, of course, because yes. they are better. <laughs> they contain some enhancements for testing, for example, so it's much more easier to create the kind of unit and uh, integration test for your add-on projects in the same product, not into your actual application project. So. Yeah. So share, uh, splitting out responsibilities out of your bigger projects exactly, that is always yes. a good way to go. Yeah. And then the third thing about this renewal is that you should use it. It's yeah. really, really fast. So you will really save some time when you use this cloud compilation model, but still not use it in production. Yes, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. If you have some questions, more questions about this CDN and application widget set, just uh, renewals in general, you can use the forum, ask there, and uh, they will answer all yeah, the difficult questions. I can answer the easy ones. And uh, there will also be a blog post about this same renewals. So there, that's probably pretty much the same stuff that we actually covered here. Most of it, but yes. But in a written form, so, so you, can, well, you can read it as well. And uh, that's about it. So, bye. Bye. <clears throat>